uh, Joey said, come over. Joey said, come over here in the morning. I said, get up, come over. So I come over, and I'm like, well, wasn't that what you wanted? He's like, all right, I'm going to do it again, but look at your nostrils. So I look at my nostrils, and you see it going up and down like a snap. So you and you know, I go to go to the door, and then you can hear my footsteps, you know? And as I took like three footsteps, you hear your going. <laughs> so like, I couldn't get it right. I was just sitting there laughing. Like, I found it out. So you were just like, he, he, you know, he's an absolutely funny guy, you know? And my mom, I could just feel, like, you know, the like, senses you could feel? I could just feel the over, like, looking at me, like, he did all right, I'm going to do this right, you know? So that was one of my funny stories. And then, I ended up not doing it right, it took about nine takes, so the guy down below ended up shutting the door on me. So as I was walking through the door, I was like, all right, open the door, open the door. He's like, oh, sorry. I had to reopen the door for me, so. I got lots of funny stories, though. Uh, for some reason, everyone had a laugh with me. <laughs> so I thought this was going to be a family Q&A. He's now brought it right down to the level of, <laughs> well, we'll have to move on pretty quickly. Peter, being the giant bookie, the lovable character, anything funny? Um, yeah, I think when we were going to rescue the princess, and Han and Luke are in some sort of outfits, we are walking along the corridor, and all of a sudden, this little droid comes screaming out, almost tripped me over. And, you know, the, if, you, if you watch the movie, Chewie gives him a piece of, a uh, piece of words out of his mouth, as he should do, because you can't trust a little droid anywhere <laughs> in the trunk, so... Chewie uh, sorted him out, and, you know, it seemed funny at the time, but now, the reaction from you guys is... <laughs> okay! So, again, you know, it's a bit fact that I thought it was funny, but... <laughs> Did I actually say that there and then? 
Yes, I did. I'm so worried. I thought, well, I had four lines in a screen in the film. <laughs> And um, one of them had cocked up. So, do I own up or just go ahead and say thank you? They said, right, Kurt, thanks, we'll move on. So, I didn't tell anybody until a few years ago. So, that was sort of embarrassing and funny, I suppose. <laughs> right, next, next question. All right, my name's Preston McManus. I'm like, I don't really like stars and star. It's like, I'm a Star Wars. I'm like, and then Pearl is sure I think like I read the song about David Prowse and like couldn't see the helmet and like he accidentally like knocks her out gunness over. Like it's not true. Yeah, the fact it really is true I think. The, yeah. The thing is with the with the the, 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 um, the Darth Vader costume uh, went on I think about fifteen different pieces. It was all made from quilted leather and fiberglass. It weighed, it weighed about forty pounds. And what I used to do, I used to go to the studios the first thing in the mornings and just put the trousers and the leggings and the boots and, and a t-shirt and keep it and used to stay as long as I possibly could in that. But bear in mind also we filmed during the hottest summer we've ever had in Great Britain. So as I said, I was trying to keep out of the suit as long as I possibly could. And they would call you for rehearsals. And uh, you, uh, then they would, you know, you, I would put the rest of the suit on the top, still without the helmet and the mask, you see. And then you would rehearse and rehearse and rehearse. And, rehearse. and then eventually they would turn and say, Well, I'm sorry, but you know, we, we, we've got to rehearse with you in the helmet and the mask. You see, well, this fight scene that we did with, with Sir Alec, um, we choreographed the whole thing. We'd been working on it for weeks and weeks and weeks, even working with the Stunt Ranger down where he lived. And I was working with the Stunt Ranger up in North London, about, about 60, 70 miles away from where Sir Alec was. And so we, 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 and we practiced. Um, uh, the fight scene in quiet studios. And I used to, we used to sit down in the chairs and, and I used to turn around to Sir Alec and say, well, you know, do you want to come next door? Let's, let's practice our fight. He said, we used to go to the sticks and just let kids fight the sticks. And, um, and we had this all, all planned out exactly how it should be. And, um, and then we understood we rehearsed the theme. We, we rehearsed it in, in, without the help of the mask on. And everything ended up nicely. And Alec, Alec finished, finished up in exactly where he should be where I arm him away, and, he, and he's actually supposed to go into the wall of the, of the corridor, which is, which is about three feet away, so I push him away. So your powers are weak, man, basically, and push him away. And um, so eventually we, uh, we, we had to rehearse with this helmet and mask on. And uh, of course, the helmet and the mask missed up very, very the, the, the eyepieces missed up very, very quickly. I can't see what I'm doing, I can't see what I'm doing. And I ended up in a totally wrong position, with, with instead of Sir Alec, back facing the corridor wall. He was actually facing up the corridor, his back was up the corridor. And I can't see anything from back so. And I just, I, I can just see his leg right in front of me. And I push him away, I go, how is it weak all that? And he goes, did you do it? Did you do it? And there's three summers all this right, you know. And, and everybody comes racing up and he says, you're not so right, give this over, what are you doing like that? I'm sorry, I didn't realize where we were, I didn't realize. You know. <laughs> and he, went, he was out, you know, um, I, I saw him. I apologize profusely. And uh, he, he was quite alright. Quite nice. Yeah. Actually, I'll tell you, if, 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 can I do a little story? Yes, there is a, two minutes. No, there's a, uh, <laughs> no, there's, a, there's, a, there's a lovely picture of Sir Alec and Sir Alec Guinness and me together. And um, uh, I, I used to have to sign it. Um, but, you know, Dave Price is Darth Vader, so which is what I normally sign. And somebody said to me, he said, you think you put something else, something different on this, um, on this autograph thing of yours? Because we're going to send it down to Sir Alec Guinness, you see, to, to be signed as well. So I, I signed these pictures. I put on there, your powers are weak, old man. <laughs> 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 uh, it's but I didn't know <laughs> that something Sir Alec Guinness was dying. <laughs> Anyway, these, 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 these um, pictures, I, 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 signed, I signed half a dozen with Dave Prowse's Dark Ages and half a dozen with your powers and weak old And these photographs came back from Sir Alec Guinness, and as I said, he was, he was very, very ill at the time. And the, 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 the ones which had your powers and weak old came back and he said, why don't you take that stupid black mask off and show us who you really are? <laughs>